Oh, hey, what's up guys? It's another morning, another day at the office. Today's my first time bike riding to the office. I've decided that I'm gonna try as often as possible to commute by bike. Gotta pump my tires. Guys, first ride to the office, success. You wouldn't believe it, but look how fast I biked the distance. Can you see it? Yeah, there you go, focus. That's right. It took me 20 minutes to bike to the office, and the thing that's so shocking is, I looked on Google Maps that how long would it take to do it with a car? 14 minutes. So I was six minutes slower than with a car, but I used no gas, and I got a workout. I really think I'm gonna start bike riding every day to the office. Well, maybe not every day. When it's raining or it's snowing here in Finland, I might have to think about some backup option. Okay, that's enough about the office and bike riding. I doubt you guys really care too much about all that stuff. But today I do wanna talk about something really important and that's the secret to getting the perfect skin tones in Lightroom. I haven't done a tutorial in a while, so I thought today would be the perfect day to do a tutorial and teach you and help you guys learn more about photography and how to get the perfect skin tones. Because it's really important when it comes to photography that we have the right looking skin tones. You know, you don't want shots that look too much like an Oompa Loompa, but as well, you don't want shots where the person looks like they're gonna barf soon. So it's really important that you get exactly the perfect skin tones for whoever you're shooting and when you're editing your photos. But speaking of photography and learning and filmmaking, today this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare has kindly sponsored this episode and is offering two months free service for everyone who clicks the link below and signs up. And the reason why you should sign up to Skillshare is, well, I'm a teacher myself there and the courses that they have there are amazing. There's over 15,000 courses available, so you can literally learn about anything and everything you want. So not only just about filmmaking and photography, but if you wanna learn about cooking or you wanna learn about how to draw or whatever you wanna learn about, there's pretty much a course for that. So if you are interested in about learning and taking your own photography filmmaking to the next level, sign up for Skillshare today two months free service, and from there on, it's only $10 a month, so it's super cheap, super affordable. If you haven't been to film school, you've already saved yourself $30,000, so take some of that money and spend $10 a month in order to get Skillshare and learn all you can. All right, before we can start editing, we gotta go shoot some photos over there. So um, this is a little bit tricky because I don't know how I'm gonna get shots of myself, but I think we'll manage to do it somehow. So this is the studio setup we got here today. You see this, there's this nice, dark gray matte backdrop and I'm gonna actually be using my aperture lights. I know they're not flashes or speed lights but I'm gonna use this light to take some portraits of myself so we can edit that and show you how to get the perfect skin tones. And we might as well use the 1DX Mark II while we still have it. Thanks to Canon, I've had the loaner for the whole summer and uh, hopefully I can use it still for a while. But we're gonna use this to be shooting the photos and then we're gonna use the aperture light for the lighting and then we're gonna go edit some skin tones in Lightroom. That was probably one of the more fun shoots I've ever done. It was really hard because I was literally just shooting myself there and I've never shot portraits of myself. But with a little bit of tweaking here and there with the focus, I don't know if you saw that, but I actually just put a tripod in the chair and just focus on the tripod. And then from there, just try to go back and forth until I got perfect focus. And then at one point I wanted to get a little bit of fill light on my face. So I was like, oh man, how do I do this? Usually someone would just hold a reflector and just reflect some more light in your face. So I just got some random box there and just put on a little white table there and got myself some fill light. Man, oh man, am I loving this office because there's just so much more space to get creative and try new things. But now photos are ready. So let's just throw them on the computer and jump into Lightroom and I'm gonna teach you the secret to perfect skin tones. All right, so we've shot our photos in the studio. As well, I'm gonna mix a few photos from lifestyle shoots just because doing skin tones for lifestyle photos is a little bit different than when you're shooting studio shots just because the lighting and the environment is a lot different, whereas in the studio, it's constant. So we're gonna edit photos from the studio, but as well, we're gonna edit photos from just different travel photos I've shot. Now, when it comes to skin tones, I personally love warm, tan skin tones. Now, there's a fine line between warm, tan skin tones compared to the Willy Wonka Oompa Loompa 
And as well, there's the other side of the coin that you have the green Frankenstein. So there's the green Frankenstein over here and Oompa Loompa over here and somehow you wanna meet in the middle to get those nice, warm, tanned skin tones. The challenge in Lightroom is that there is no scopes to help guide you compared to Premiere where you have vector scopes that'll help you be able to distinguish where the skin tones are at and what colors they are. But in Lightroom, you really just do need to train your eye to be able to see when the skin tones are looking good or not. You don't wanna get the Frankenstein, but you don't wanna get the Oompa Loompa either. That's our guidelines. We wanna be in the happy medium. But let's open up Lightroom now and import the photos. All right, so now we've opened up the photos in Lightroom. Uh, as you can see in the beginning, it was a little bit hard to get the photos in focus. So I was able to even look at this photo and be like, okay, well, the hat's in focus here, but the eye's not, so I need to bring the focus a little bit closer. And then, for example, even here, missed focus again. So I had to keep just tweaking, missed focus there. Then it's like, boom, got the focus. So we'll delete these first three photos because they're out of focus. But when I would usually start editing a photo, of course, I have my presets here, but we won't use any presets today because we don't really need to for skin tones. We can just go from here. I'm gonna add some, a little bit of contrast just to pop it out. Maybe bring down the highlights a little bit, eh, the highlights down a little bit, and then bring up the shadows, maybe the blacks even a little bit, not that much, like that, okay? And now, when we pull in closer, we can look at the skin tones. And usually, I would do the white balance first to figure out, so that's 5,300, let's see if we want a little bit warmer. That looks pretty nice already. And to be honest, in a studio setting, the lighting is gonna be always so good, so skin tones a lot of times look really good off the bat. But here, I can even just go and tweak a little bit by going down here to HSL. So which is HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, Luminance, and here you can just choose all. And you have these great adjustment buttons. So for example, the Hue, if I notice that the skin is too yellow or too red, I can go back and forth. So now, for example, it's more red. And then if I go over to the other side, it goes more to a yellow or a green. And you wanna get that nice, happy medium, the orange. So a lot of times I just go back and forth and it's like, okay, that's too red that's too yellow green so i'm gonna go here it's like okay that looks good now then if you're noticing that the skin tones are too too dark or too bright you can go to the lumens tab and you can choose the skin tones and you can bring it down so for example even this photo you can bring it down not that much that looks weird but like that and then lastly you got saturation so you can make it more tanned looking or less tanned if you want more of that desaturated look so I like the nice tanned warm look, so that looks pretty good already. So that was before, you know, quite white, blown out, not that nice, and this is now. Now I look at it again, you have to kind of look. A lot of times when you're editing photos, you it looks really good, and then you step back from it, you look back in, it's like, okay, that didn't look that good after all. So for example, I think this is a little bit too reddish. So I can go back to hue. Maybe bring a little bit of highlights back in the photo. So now, before, after, before, after. And this is all just with playing with HSL and just tweaking the skin tones. Earlier this week, I did a shoot with Rope. We did some portraits as well in the studio here. So this is a nice close up, we can see his face. Let's try to copy and paste what I did earlier. Already, that looks a lot better. Rope's skin maybe isn't as tanned or dark, so we go back to the luminance tab, and with the luminance we can bring down the skin tones a little bit. These are looking a little bit too yellowish, so let's bring a little bit back this more reddish, and now let's add a little bit of saturation to Rope's skin just because he's finished and hasn't seen the sun in a while. Okay, now when I look back, it's like, okay, that's too much saturation. So we're gonna go back and bring it down a little bit maybe the luminance a little bit higher. Uh, let's go back and see it again. Before, after, before, after. Already looking a lot better when it comes to skin tones. Now, how do you do this when it's a lifestyle shoot and you're shooting outside? It's a whole different ball game. So I have a few photos from the Dolomites that I'm gonna be playing around with today. And so here's uh, four shots. Three shots are of my wife and one shot is of me. And all different scenarios, some are cloudy, some are more sunny. 
somewhere in the forest, so you're gonna have to play with the greens because that's always a challenge when you're in a forest area. The greens bounce off and they go on the skin tones. But I'm gonna use some of my presets here. So I'm just gonna go with TH4. And already looking pretty good, but we're gonna add some warmth to the photo. Here you can see, for example, the skin tones right here. It's a little bit kind of green orange. So I can use HSL, so it's a little bit greenish. So I'm gonna go more towards the orange reddish like that. And then I can play with the luminance. I can bring down the brightness of the skin a little bit. And then I can do the saturation. So that's already looking pretty good. Again, like that. I look at it, it's a little bit maybe too reddish. So I go back to the hue. Perfect. Let's bring the luminance back up a little bit. But I'm using these tabs here in HSL pretty much the whole time. This is before, this is after. Next photo, again, okay. Just adjust the exposure a little bit. Maybe the white balance a little bit. Nope, not that much. Great. Now again, we go to HSL. Already some of the tweaks from before. So it's a nice, just warmth. Maybe we can see if we need a little bit more saturation here. Maybe a little bit. Play with the luminance. Perfect. Maybe a little bit too dark. Perfect. Now, sometimes you do face the problem that there's other colors in the photo. For example, there's other uh, orange, yellow, red tones in the color and you don't wanna change that. So when you do face this problem that you wanna change the skin tones, but you don't wanna change the tones of the whole photo, that's when you wanna start using brushes. So for example, let's just give an example. For example, if the photo was way more like greenish like that, and you don't wanna change the background, but you do wanna change the skin color, you can as well use brushes. So a lot of times I'll use brushes and if the skin is green or more yellowish, then obviously I go to the opposite. So more of a magenta and then I bring some cooling into it. So maybe like minus five and then I go and then I start brushing in to the skin. And the great part about brushes is that you can always make the changes afterwards again. So I'm gonna just brush in that area. Now when we zoom in and we go the before and after. So before it was more yellow and kind of greenish and now because I've put in a little magenta and I look at it, it's like, okay, maybe that's a little bit too much magenta. So I just go to 10 or maybe even five, eight. A lot of times the skin tones, minor tweaks, but they really do make the difference. So that was before and now this is after. Already looking really good. Last photo of me, gonna fix the white balance a little bit and the exposure, so make it more warm, bring a little contrast in the photo. Okay, great. Now we can see my skin tones here. We can play with the hue saturation and luminance, so that's too red. That's looking more better. Maybe some saturation. Let's see if the luminance. Already. Much more natural looking skin tones. Maybe a little bit too on the red side. So I'll go minus six. Then for example, here I can just brush in just a little bit of exposure and it looks like the forehead is a little bit cooler than the rest of the face, so I can just brush in some warmth into it. So I just go like a five. Already a lot better. So this was before, and this is now. And lastly, we got my wife here in the Dolomites. Crazy place, if you ever have a chance to go there, go there for sure. So I'm gonna put this preset earlier, fix the exposure, so I'm gonna make it darker. And as you can see, it's pretty cold, so we're gonna put the warmth of the whole photo warmer. But now we're facing the problem here that her skin looks way too orange, way too uh, saturated. So we're gonna go to the 
hue, saturation, luminance. Let's first tweak the hue a little bit. Let's see if it needs to go more orange, more green. Okay, I like I like that there. Now we're gonna go to saturation. We're gonna bring it down, up. Already, it's a lot better. So there, to that. Really small tweaks, but when you practice and you, you really train your eye to see how to get the perfect skin tones, just these small tools in Lightroom with HSL and using brushes, you can get the perfect skin tones for your photos. All right guys, hopefully this helped you figure out the secret to getting perfect skin tones in Lightroom. As well, make sure you click the link below and get your two month free subscription to Skillshare and get learning. Trust me, you won't regret it. All right guys, have a fantastic week. If you like this video, make sure you Hit the like button, comment below, and subscribe to the channel if you are new so you can stay up to date on the latest videos. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate you.